Hello everyone, welcome to Allowing Me by Jacqueline. And today we're gonna do, I think it's the last video in our fancy binding series. Um, and today we're gonna do the fillet or flange binding. And I think of this as like a cute little tuxedo pinstripe just inside the binding. It's a great way to add a thin pop of contrast. Um, it kind of gives you the vibe of a border but it's just teeny tiny. I'm kind of curious if somebody out there is uh, willing to experiment trying like a double or triple fillet with more layers in there. I'm really curious to see what that looks like. Would it just be too bulky? Somebody needs to try that. Send me pictures and let me know. So anyways, we are going to do that. I put together a quick dog quilt for the back of my car that I can take out and wash and um, just pulled it together with some fabric that I had pre-quilted on the machine and in this video we're going to go ahead and add a filleted border to that and then we'll go over the magical formula to calculate your own filleted binding so you can get the custom size that you want, cut your strips to the size that you want. So let's take a look at how that comes together. So this is what the binding will look like. And you can tell here that I've separately pieced the binding in the normal way that I would for each color strip and then just join them with the same. And I'll just press that open. So the color that is whiter is the color that will be underneath and be peeking out as the fillet. The color that is narrower will be the main color that rolls over on the outside. So this binding will make a white binding with a dark fillet. And this is what your binding will look like all pressed out in stage one. And then on the second step, you will take your binding and press it in half the way you normally do. And there you can see what your fillet will look like. <laughs> to find the width of your fillet, you'll take the width of each strip minus a quarter of an inch, find the difference, and divide that by two, and that is how much left over will be sticking out. So this will be your outer binding, and your fillet is this little part here. So go ahead and press that in half. And here's what your binding looks pressed. So if you press this inner seam toward the short strip, when you fold it over, your fillet will be empty and you'll be top stitching basically in this ditch. So it'll make it a lot easier if this is empty and doesn't have all of your seam allowances and your bulk from your joints. So even if this is the lighter strip, I would press toward the skinnier strip. So speaking of catching things in the seam, I'm going to put this little um, pro grain, well, this is a satin ribbon loop, and all this will do is slip over the headrest in my car to keep this car quilt from sliding back as the dogs jump in and out of the car. So I'll just have a little loop to hook over each headrest. Um, my back seat's laid down so the headrests face forward, and that'll just keep it in place. All right, some of you with eagle eyes will have noticed that I um, pin these straps on the wrong direction. I'm going to sew them on this way, catch them in the binding, and then they fold up and loop around the seam covers. So yes, I had those pinned on the wrong way. Okay, so assuming we're treating this as the back of the quilt, um, and the only difference is the fillet shows up on the front of the quilt, you're going to take your fillet color, which is your wider color, and you'll sew it onto the back of the quilt like you normally do. And then when you roll this to the front, your outer binding color, which is your narrower strip and your fillet sticking out will appear. Okay, so um, now I've sewn the binding to the back and rolled it to the front and I'm gonna stitch as close as I can to the ditch and 
this is basically black and white. So I'm using a black thread and I'm going to make sure that I stay on the black because if I lap up onto this white it's going to look cuckoo bananas. Although the rest of this quilt is a little bananas, um, it's a dog quilt uh, and I used a lot of scrap materials so the colors are a little wackadoo because it's what I had on hand. Okay, this quilt is a little bit wild, but there you see the fillet edge. This is, um, what's that? Looks like a sharp little tuxedo stripe on there. And that can add just a fancy extra touch to the front of any binding. Just because I know how much you guys love my videos about colored pencils. <laughs> Let's go ahead and figure out how you're going to determine the size of the strips you need to make your filleted binding and the size that your fillet or flange is going to end up. So you already pretty much have a feel for how wide you want your total strip to be and the total width of the finished strip is not any different from what you would normally do. So I like for a filleted binding to make it a little bit wider than a normal binding. So you could use your two and a half inch binding, that's very typical, a three inch binding, or a three and a half inch binding. Um, any of these is gonna work. So let's say we're going to do a three inch binding and that is your choice. So I want a three inch binding and let's say I want my fillet to be about one quarter inch. So I want my second strip to be one half inch bigger than my first strip. So this is the amount of fillet that's going to show. Multiply that by two. I've got one half inch. And then I am going to lose a quarter of an inch from each strip here. So if I take my three and a half, three inches that we said we wanted to do for our total strip width. I'm going to subtract that half inch. So now I'm at two and one half. So three minus our one half equals two and a half. We're going to divide that by two and that is going to give us one and one quarter. That's how much my skinny strip needs to be showing. So now I need to add a quarter inch for the seam allowance. One and a half. So cut strip one and one half inches. So for this wider strip I need it to be one and a half plus half an inch for my fillet plus a quarter inch for my seam allowance here. So that was one and one quarter plus a quarter plus one half. And that is going to be two inches. And if I add two plus one and a half, that's three and a half. I'm gonna lose half an inch in my seam allowance. That gives me my three inch total. And this is half an inch bigger. And that's gonna give me a quarter of an inch fill it when I fold this in half. So the fillet is this part right here. So let's put that all together. Assuming that you are using quarter inch seam allowances, you've got your total strip doing a normal um, double binding where you fold the binding in half and apply it before you've sewn it on. So you're gonna pick this number. Then you're gonna find your 
fill it with. Now I'm going to multiply, let's call this F W. Let's call this T for total W. F for fill it with. And then we'll end up calculating our skinny strip width. We'll call that SW and our fat strip width. We'll call that FW. Oh no, we can't use FW. Wide. <laughs> Okay, so I take my total width that I have picked. I'm going to subtract two times my fillet width. I'm going to divide that number by two. Then I'm going to add one quarter inch. And that is going to give me my skinny strip width. Then I'm going to take my skinny strip width. I'm going to add two times fillet width. And that is going to give me my wide strip width. 